Hi. Now what we've got here is a typical question on the conservation of linear momentum. So you might like to try it, um, pause the video, come back when ready and I'll go through the work solution with you. Okay, well let's see how you got on if you did have a go. What we've got here is two particles A and B of masses 5m kilograms and 2m kilograms respectively are moving in opposite directions along the same straight horizontal line. Well, first of all, what I'd want to do is simply sketch something for a question like this. So I would start off with the two particles A and B with masses of 5m kilograms and 2m kilograms. So if the particles collide directly and they're moving in opposite directions, then clearly A must be moving towards B. So I'll draw something like this. And this would be what I would call before impact. So I'll just write before here. Now you could draw another diagram with the two spheres below here, but I'm going to just leave it on the same diagram. That's totally up to you, but uh, I'm going to write after here. What happens after they collide? Well, we're told that the particles collide directly immediately before the collision. The speeds of A and B are 3 meters per second and 4 meters per second respectively. So that means A is moving at 3 meters per second towards B and B is moving at 4 meters per second towards A. Now the direction of motion of A is unchanged by the collision. So clearly that's going to be moving in that direction towards the right there. And we're told that the speed of A is 0.8 meters per second. Well, the speed is the magnitude of the velocity. So this is going to be moving at 0.8 meters per second then. So which way is B going to go in the impact, after the impact? Well, it's got to move to the right. Obviously, if it bangs into A and A is moving to the right, it can't clearly carry on moving to the left. It's got to move towards the right. And we've got to find the speed of B immediately after the collision. So I'm going to refer to this being a final speed. I'm going to call it V. And because it's related to B, I'm going to put a little subscript there, VB. All right. Now to work out VB, what we need to use is the conservation of linear momentum, which is essentially that the total momentum before impact equals the total momentum after impact, providing no external forces act on the system. And there are no external forces that act on the system here. So we should be familiar with the fact that momentum is mass times velocity. And because we're dealing with velocity, we need to set up a positive sense for doing a problem like this. And it doesn't matter which way you set up the positive sense, although I'm going to select positive in the direction of the final velocity of B. So that's to the right. So I'm going to take that as positive. Now, if we do that, looking at the total momentum before impact, we look at the momentum of A, which is going to be the mass, which is 5m, and we're multiplying it by the velocity of A, the initial velocity. So that's going to be 3 meters per second, and because it's in the positive sense, that's going to be plus 3. So mass times velocity. Then we add this to the momentum of B. So it's going to be the mass, 2m, and we multiply this by its velocity. Now the speed is 4 meters per second, but you can see it's going to the left in the opposite sense to what we've got up here. So the velocity will now be minus 4. And these are places where people do tend to get caught out on. So take care over this. Now this is equal to the total momentum after impact. So if we start with A again, it'll be its mass, 5m, times its velocity. And its velocity, well, it has a speed of 0.8 meters per second, and it's to the right in the positive sense. So that's going to be times 0.8. 
and to this we add the momentum of B. So its mass is 2m and we now multiply it by its velocity. Well it's going to be VB because it acts to the right in the positive sense. So it's 2m VB. Okay so let's just see where this takes us now. We've got an m in every term so we could cancel out the m throughout. Alright so I'll do that and what we have now in the first term if we simplify this is we've therefore got 15 and here we've got minus 8 equals and 5 times 0 0.8 is 4 and then we've got plus 2vb. So if we do 15 take 8 well that's 7 and then if we subtract 4 from both sides we therefore have 3. So we've got 3 here equals 2vb. And if we divide both sides by 2 then vb is equal to 3 over 2 or 1.5. Now I did say find the speed of B immediately after the collision and speed is the magnitude of velocity. So whether it was moving to the left or the right its speed is 1.5 or 3 over 2 meters per second. So I'm just going to summarize there and we've got therefore the speed okay, of B equals, I'll leave it as 3 over 2, 3 over 2 meters per second.